involves distributed systems. Right? A distributed system is essentially any set of computers that talk to each other over the network. So what are examples of that? You know, CNN.com, anything on the web, Facebook, you all spend a lot of time on there. Even things that you think may not be a distributed system, like Angry Birds, for example. Where does Angry Birds store all the scores? Probably in the cloud somewhere, right? Hashtag cyber, that's science. <laughs> One nice thing about being in distributed systems is that essentially I'm all up on yourself. Right? Basically, anything that you do, computationally speaking, is probably going to involve the cloud somehow. Right? So that's where I come in. And so uh, a lot of the research that I've looked at recently has involved the client side of web applications. So in other words, what's the HTML, the JavaScript, the CSS that gets loaded in your browser when you go to one of these sites? Right? Now, when you go to a place like Facebook, to you, visually speaking, it looks like it's just sort of one application. But of course, if you actually look at what's inside that application, there's code from all different types of people. Right? There's code from the ad provider, there could be code from analytics providers, there's code from Facebook, there. there's HTML, there's so on and so forth. And so if you were to look at the average web pages you go to, it's probably downloading hundreds of K or even megabytes of JavaScript code and all these other resources. So what's interesting about that is that now a web page is a fully fledged principle and a distributed protocol. Right? So it used to be back in like our parents' day, assuming that they had a computer, they'd go to these web pages. If they were lucky, they'd download an image, and that was about the end of the day. They high five each other and they went to go watch black and white TV. Right? <laughs> 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 I wouldn't be here. They literally created me, right? <laughs> <laughs> the point is that now, when you go on these very rich interactive sites, there's many more things that can go wrong. Right? I mean, that's one thing I thought was very interesting about you know, Kevin's presentation. You know, we've got all these rich computational devices, but now sort of the set of things that can fail is much, much larger. Right? And so a lot of my research is actually driven by problems that I encounter in my day-to-day -day life. So for example, we've probably all been in a situation where you go to a hotel, you struggle to get on the hotel Wi-Fi, and you get on there and trying to do anything, even get to the logon page of the hotel Wi-Fi is super, super slow. Right? It's like they're sending these packets over you know, flying crickets or something like that. Right? So like one of the research projects that I looked at actually uh, was a system that allowed web developers to uh, essentially load pages more quickly, even in the presence of poor internet connections. Right? Another problem that I have personally as a web developer is that you know, I develop some page, it looks really nice on my machine, you know, but I'm using some particular browser, some particular OS, so on and so forth. I'll send it to my friend, I'll say, what does it look like? And they say, well, it looks like this, it looks terrible, right? Because they're running Firefox instead of Chrome, and they're using Mac instead of Windows, or so on and so forth. So one of the big reasons why web pages break is because it's just very difficult to test them right, in a robust way. So a lot of my research focuses on things like, how can we create remote debugging frameworks for web pages? So imagine that I gave my friend a, a pointer to my page, and uh, he or she says, this thing looks broken. I can then essentially think of it almost as like ssh into that page in a secure way. I can look at the state, do things that you, know, you might imagine Visual Studio or GDB or things like that doing for you. So at a high level, that's the kind of research I do. Um, you know, if you're more interested, we can talk about it later. You can look me up on the internet. You know, I'm ready for the internet. Uh, one thing that I wanted to close with, though, is that one reason why I think that grad school is so exciting and research in general is so exciting is because it's not just about you know writing code, writing papers, like we were saying before. A lot of it is actually a communication aspect. Right? It's going and talking to people in the government or the industry or the developers and trying to sort of convince them there's this neat new way of looking at the world that you hadn't thought about before. Right? And so I think that's really important when you're thinking about going to grad school and doing research and being successful at those things. Because I think a lot of times you, know, you hear sort of politicians say things like STEM field, STEM field, we need more people who you know, like sigmas and Greek letters and stuff like that. Okay? <laughs> and that is actually true. You should not be allergic to those things. But the problem is that if you look at the people who are the most successful, I think, in grad school, as professors, out in the industry, these are actually the people who can communicate well. These are the people who can actually articulate why the problems they're attacking are important, why their solution is novel and interesting, and how that solution is going to work. Right? And so uh, you know, hopefully I can talk to you some more in the one-on-one -on -one session or out in the hallway track about different ways that you can sort of work on communicating effectively and crisply and articulately. Because I think that you know, even when you look at your applications to grad school, that's one of the main things that people will be looking for. Right? Is this a person who can crisply express you know, why they want to come to grad school and the things they might do if they show up in grad school? So with that, I'll conclude and I guess we're ready for questions. All right.